Now, since the beginning of all this weapons of mass destruction, regime change, pockets of resistance, targets of opportunity business, it's been difficult to have an honest discussion about the direction President Bush is taking this country. In fact, when you combine the new mandate that criticizing the commander-in-chief is off limits in wartime with last year's official disbanding of the Democratic Party, well, we're left at an all-time low in the good old-fashioned honest debate category. Now, I know you're thinking, but John, every time I want to have a calm, honest discussion about these kinds of issues, I'm shouted down and harassed by uh, the Dixie Chicks and their ilk. <laughs> well, tonight it all changes. We're going to have an honest, open debate between the President of the United States and the one man we believe has the insight and the cojones to stand up to him. So first, joining us tonight, George W. Bush, 43rd President of the United States. Welcome, Mr. President. Good evening. I'm pleased to take your questions tonight. Well, thank you very much, sir. I'm pleased to ask. Them. <laughs> Taking the other side, joining us from the year 2000, Texas Governor and Presidential Candidate George W. Bush. Good evening. Thank you, Governor. Mr. President, you won the coin toss. The first question will go to you. Why is the United States of America using its power to change governments in foreign countries? We must stand up for our security and for the permanent rights and the hopes of mankind. The United States of America will make that stand. Well, certainly that represents a bold new doctrine in foreign policy, Mr. President. Governor Bush, do you agree with that? Yeah, I I'm not so sure the role of the United States is to go around the world and say this is the way it's got to be. Well, that's, uh, that's a difference of opinion, and, and certainly that's what this country is about, differences of opinion. Mr. President, uh, let me just get specific. Why are we in Iraq? We will be um, changing the regime of Iraq for the good of the Iraqi people. Governor, then I'd like to hear your response on that. If we're an arrogant nation, they'll... They'll resent us. I think one way for us to end up being uh, viewed as the ugly American is for us to go around the world saying, we do it this way, so should you. Well, that's, that's an excellent point. Um, I don't think you can argue with that. Uh, Mr. President, is the idea to just build a new country that we like better? We will tear down the apparatus of terror, and we will help you to build a new Iraq that is prosperous and free. I don't think our troops ought to be used for what's called nation building. Well, that's, that's fair enough, Governor. I mean, certainly that's, that's, you're entitled to that. But then, Governor, answer this. How do you propose we nation build? Would you use diplomacy? Let me say this to you. I wouldn't use force. I wouldn't use force. Well, Mr. President, clearly you're skeptical of the Governor. Now, Governor, you sound categorically against the use of force. In your time in Texas, what have you done to demonstrate your willingness to be tough? Well, I've been standing up to big Hollywood, big trial lawyers. Um, what was the question? It was about emergencies, wasn't it? No, no, it wasn't. <laughs> Getting back to Iraq, Mr. President, you're as familiar with the governor's record in Texas as anybody. Are you willing... Are you willing, Mr. President, to trust Governor Bush with our foreign policy? I am not willing to take that chance again, John. Strong words from two very different men. Now, as this debate draws to a close, I need to turn to the subject of money. Much of this discussion on foreign policy is moot if we can't afford to pay for it. So we're running out of time. Quickly, both of you, let's talk numbers. I'm sending the Congress a wartime supplemental appropriations request of $74.7 billion to fund needs directly arising from the Iraqi conflict. $74.7 billion appears to be within the realm of reason, Governor. Obviously tonight we're going to hear some phony numbers about what I think and what we ought to do. Wow. It's a little vituperative. Well, on that note, I want to thank both George W. Bushes for taking part tonight. In keeping with our debate rules, we will end our discussion with a trite and insincere farewell. Mr. President, you are the most powerful man in the world. You can go first. Good night, and may God continue to bless America. Wow. Incredibly insincere. Governor, can you top that? 
Thanks. Thanks from the bottom of my heart. Nice. Wow. Now, this, this has been... I have really enjoyed this meeting of the minds. What a historic evening. It's, it's really one for the vault. If only there were a secure place to put the videotape of this for all time. Where could we put it? I think it should stay in a lockbox. I'm, I'm sorry, where, where, where should we put it? Lockbox, lockbox, lockbox. Oh, you, you don't have to shout. We'll be right back.